In this section, we'll cover the basic physics of forces that are applied to the body. The way that force behaves when it's exerted on the body is what affects the consequences of that force. So we'll spend some time understanding how force works so that we can design protection that manages force effectively. Underlying everything we'll talk about in this unit is objects in motion. Newton's first law of motion says that an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion until a force acts on it. On Earth, this law can be confusing because there are complicating environmental conditions that affect motion, things like air resistance and gravity. In space, this law is much more clear. If an object is set in motion in space, it will move at the same pace and in the same direction forever, or until it hits something, until another force acts on it. In the case of impact protection, Newton's first law tells us that in order to stop an object, we need to exert a force. So if an object is flying at a person, we need to exert a force on the object. But the reason that that object can hurt us is that in the process of exerting a force on the object to stop it, the object is exerting a force on us as well. In any collision, force is exerted on both objects, and that force is equal. We'll come back to this concept later, but for now let's consider the ways in which force might be experienced. Force has both a magnitude and a direction. It can be a stronger force or a weaker force, and it can be directed in many different directions. We're going to talk about three directions of force. The direction of force that you may have in mind already is the kind that pushes two things together or pushes against opposite sides of a thing. This is called compressive force. Force that pulls things away from each other or stretches something is called tensile force. And force that rubs two surfaces against each other is called shear force. I mentioned that force also has a magnitude. How strong a force is depends on two things, the mass of the object and its acceleration. The magnitude of a force is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. So if a more massive object and a less massive object are traveling at the same acceleration, like a tennis ball and a bowling ball, the bowling ball will exert more force than the tennis ball. However, if two tennis balls are traveling at different accelerations, the one that has more acceleration will exert more force than the one with less acceleration. This relationship was first defi defined by Sir Isaac Newton and is known as Newton's second law of motion. I keep saying acceleration, and maybe you're thinking that that means that it's traveling faster. The problem is that acceleration and speed aren't the same thing, and understanding both is really important to understanding forces. Let's start with position and distance. If a runner is standing right here, that's position. If he runs over to there, his position has changed by a specific distance. If we measure how long it took him to travel this distance by dividing the distance by the time, that's his velocity, or how fast he's going. Now let's say that every time I place a dot, the runner has gone the same distance. How far apart those dots are is now going to be the amount of time that it took him to go that same distance. Let's say the runner's getting tired, so each length is going to take longer and longer. The rate of change of his speed over time is acceleration. So to think back to force, let's take those two tennis balls again. When they hit a wall, what matters is how, how much the velocity changes and how fast. They have to go from whatever speed they were at back to zero in almost no time. So the one that was traveling faster has to decelerate more than the one that wasn't traveling as fast. So velocity is important to acceleration in a collision, and acceleration is important to force. But time is also important. Remember that if we want to decrease the, the amount of force, we have to decrease the amount of acceleration. We just talked about what would happen if we changed velocity, but sometimes when you're protecting a person, you don't have a way to tell the projectile to slow down. We do have a little control over how much time it takes for the projectile to go from whatever speed it was at to zero. Imagine that instead of hitting a wall, the tennis ball was hitting a racket. For the wall, let's pretend that the time it took to go from the ball's velocity to zero was one second. Now, here's the ball hitting a racket. If the racket stays in place, the time is the same as for the wall, still one second. But if the ball hits the racket and the racket moves or deforms in the same direction as the ball before it comes to a stop, now the ball has a lot more time to slow down. Let's say the racket takes three seconds to come to a stop. Now the velocity has three times longer to slow down, so acceleration is going to be three times smaller than before. A lot of approaches to protecting from forces involve slowing down movement more gradually so that the resulting force is not as strong. 
One way to slow down acceleration more gradually is to redirect the force rather than trying to stop it totally. When two football helmets collide, for instance, since they're both round, they're likely to glance off each other. In that way, both heads are still moving. They haven't come to a standstill. So while they have decelerated a little, they haven't decelerated as much to come to us as they would if they came to a stop. Another example of this is how stuntmen roll when they hit the ground after jumping from a height. In a lot of collisions where, where we don't have control over the surface of the colliding object, it can be possible to spread the impact over a larger area by using a rigid material that will distribute the force through itself. For example, when your shin is kicked, the force is localized in the contact area, which is probably pretty small. If you wear a rigid shin guard, the force of the kick spreads through the plastic and is spread over the area that the shin guard touches your skin.